Welcome to the Pope County Fair in Glenwood, Minnesota, right north of uh, uh, the Lake Minnewaska. Here we're looking at uh, the entrance as you come into the fair in the background there. You can see the Ferris wheel, the, the thing that traditionally has uh, excited our kids, uh, uh, both old and young, for many years. And uh, uh, we want to encourage you to come out to the fair here, come down from Alexandria, come from Wilmer, come from wherever you are, your lake cabin uh, in uh, west central Minnesota here. You can see the livestock building. We're going to take a look in there to see what uh, livestock judging is going on. I'm here on Wednesday afternoon late. Uh, as the exhibitors are starting to move stuff in. Uh, Mark Anthony and myself will be over in the uh, commercial building over in the far southeast uh, corner uh, of the fairgrounds and we'll be in the southeast corner of that building. Uh, Fort Fair Board was kind to give us a nice spot there and uh, we'll have a TV up as well as a uh, a uh, chunk of the Keystone Pipeline that's been in the news and we've carried a story on. But there's just a lot to see here at the uh, Pope County Fair, good old uh, country fairgrounds and uh, fun for all. Make sure you come and join us. Now also when you come to the Pope County Fair here in Glenwood, uh, uh, you'll have the fair favorite foods, cotton candy, chicken on a stick, uh, shrimp on a stick, uh, cheese curds, uh, we've got a, a big uh, area for you to eat here at the Pope County Fair. They've got activities going on in the grandstand. Uh, go to their website, uh, popecountyfair.com I think it is, or .org. It's pretty easy to find and, and see their schedule on there. Maybe we'll run into uh, one of the fair board folks here when we're walking around the fair a little bit. and. Uh, uh, see what uh, all they have for entertainment coming up uh, the various nights of the fair. We're doing this once again on Wednesday afternoon and uh, uh, the fair I think uh, gets in full gear tomorrow on Thursday and uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and even part of Sunday. So there's a lot to do. Uh, come out to the fair here in Glenwood. I, uh, I'll assure you, you have a good time. They've set up a good program. We're going to keep walking around the fairgrounds here today. Uh, they're doing some judging already with the uh, 4-H uh, kids and uh, uh, we just want to give you a little touch of what you can see when you come down to Glenwood this weekend at the Pope County Fair. Make sure you come. Uh, Mark Anthony, our news and weatherman, will be in the southeast corner of the commercial building and the southeast corner of the fairgrounds. And, just a lot to see here as I kind of pan around. Uh, we've got a number of food vendors here and uh, the grandstand activities, the 4-H uh, people, and uh, we're going to keep walking down here, but I'm going to shut off the camera for just a second and come back to you folks. Well, we're back and now we're in the 4-H building here in the Polk County Fair. We have uh, an extension educator. Uh, please introduce yourself and give us a little tour of the fair 8 4-H uh, uh, building here at the Polk County Fair. My name is Jody Kopsky. I'm the 4-H program coordinator here in Polk County. Uh, I coordinate the 4-H program and we had exhibit judging yesterday, Tuesday of, of the fair. And we have all of our building exhibits that are in here. At the front end we like to highlight our plants. Okay, we'll just, as you keep talking, we'll just kind of uh, uh, look at the beautiful arrangement you have here and we'll go around the, uh, that side, please, and you just keep kind of talking loud enough so uh, my mic can pick it up and go ahead of me. We need oh, okay. a uh, good looking gal rather than me in the camera so uh, um, you can so see some of the items of, we have. We have a lot of flowers on the one side and then we have vegetable gardening over here so the, the 4-H members pick a certain number of vegetables in their vegetable boxes that highlight their entire garden. So it gives them a good display of what their entire garden might be doing. We also have a lot of fruit exhibits in Polk County that might, uh, they'll pick a few apples. We normally have some berries and raspberries, but this year's been, a, we had that dry spell that kind of dried everything up. Sure. Uh, so that's a lot of potatoes as well, doing very well this year. Then we got and some crafts on this side. We got crafts on this side. Yeah, this side. Our members of this area range from third grade on up to one year, year past high school graduation. And we have a craft section, which is considered things that you could maybe replicate, and a fine art section, which is incredible, which is all unique artwork. So the exhibitors put together their artwork. They had conference interviewing yesterday, like I said, so maybe the prettiest piece might not be your grand champion because 
50% of the exhibit is judged on the exhibit, 50% is on the interview. So the, member, the members that communicate really well, maybe learn a lot through the process, might um, actually do better than maybe the prettiest piece or the most unique piece. Well, it looks like you got a lot of talented kids here in Polk County in the Glenwood area, and uh, people will en surely enjoy looking at all the items you have here. Yeah, next we have our photography area, which is definitely a popular skill for members to learn. It's a life skill that everybody sure. should learn to do. And um, again, we have both digital as well as conventional photography. Some members will learn how to just take a basic photograph and learn how to frame a picture. As they, just, as they grow in the project, they may learn to select one that's going to be good for an enlargement, or they, uh, as they even go further, they might learn how to develop, uh, develop their photos. S sounds great. A lot of nice photos there. I respect their work as I struggle to uh, film me here myself with the fans in the background and the uh, uh, noise of people coming in. But obviously a lot to see here and you've uh, did a good job as an educator the way it looks. Uh, we'll just kind of walk with me and talk. We're just going to kind of swing through and then I'm going to go over to the judging area where they're doing some livestock. Looks like we got yes. some uh, uh, blue, what do we call them, purple ribbons. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, some ring and neck pheasant uh, display and yeah, so 4-H covers all areas it's not just the foods and the livestock like you used to hear about um, we, we have wildlife projects we have photography behind us here we have actually a clover bud area all these clover bud stickers uh, we have a special program for clover bud members that is for members in kindergarten through second grade. Wonderful. And it's non-competitive. So they don't get a blue, red, white, or champion ribbon. Everybody uh, receives a participation ribbon because uh, youth development research states that at that age group, they don't need to be competing. They just need to be exploring and learning Excellent. and not feeling better or worse than someone else uh, when they're at that age. Now we're in a food section. It looks like we got some uh, um, brownies, muffins, cakes. Tell us about this. We have just, yeah, a wide variety of foods. Foods is one of the most popular projects still. Uh, definitely not a good life skill for all members to learn on how to cook. And not only do they have to learn how to follow a recipe and cook, but they also have to go in and find out what the nutritional information is on their recipe. So they have to either go into the computer, or a lot of recipes nowadays have that nutritional information. So they're learning all those facts, as well as learning to do the cooking and do a, a good job with it. Looks like you got some woodworking display here as well in the fairgrounds of Polk County, Glenwood, Minnesota. Yeah, this is, um, our, our numbers are down a little bit in woodworking. A lot of the kids I heard said they didn't want to bring their woodworking in because they're scared to have it get scratched up. Um, so we've got a few exhibits here. The shop class out at the high school teaches the members uh, some great skills and then they're able to bring it to the fair and even show, to show everybody the work that they've done and what they've learned in the past year. What's along the wall here do we got here? Um, we have the aerospace as well as, this is called our self-determined project area. And um, self-determined is just an area that helps them, helps them learn, um, helps them pick an area that's really interesting to them. and explore the learning process. So this is the, the unique part with 4-H that you have a chance to explore what tip and careers maybe you might be interested in. So we've got things that go all the way from wakeboarding to a trip to Uganda and Ethiopia, um, safety, we have all kinds, just a wide range of things. We have a, a young man that learned all about um, wood and did Harry Potter wands. So he learned a lot about it through that. Legos, as far as the building, is one of those project areas too. So they have a chance to explore things that are really interesting. Looks like we got some fabric to our left here, some uh, uh, sewing, uh, embroidery. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so the clothing project is also very popular. Not so much the sewing anymore, but clothes you buy. Um, so it teaches our members how to make smart consumer decisions when it comes to purchasing clothing. They have a chance to go out and maybe find a real good deal or to complement the outfits that they already have in their wardrobe and make wise decisions that way. Well, I, I just want to tell you and our viewers that uh, uh, Inform TV will soon have an FTP site where when you have activity in your 4-H group, your FFA group, your Kiwanis, uh, your JCs uh, around outstate Minnesota, 
If you got something interesting, uh, uh, Mark Anthony and myself uh, will be very interested in what you're doing and try to post things in our programming that will soon be 24-7, already is on the Garfield Tower. And uh, so we're looking for people to uh, load some vid video, people like yourself, your camera uh, kids here. And uh, we'll show people in outstate Minnesota the skills we have from young to old. And uh, uh, give us a little background here, and then I'm going to go on to look at some of the livestock judging. Um, in this area, we've got some animal science exhibits. So not only are they bringing in their animals, but they might be learning about uh, vet science or some of the breeds and things like that. We've got tornadoes, which is a, a geology, meteorology. Again, we just cover the spectrum with different areas. We have one young lady that did uh, Crayola was her project area to bird houses to get animal science, building a rabbit cage or a rabbit spinning stand. Any interest area is there's definitely a way of incorporating it into 4-H. 4-H is about learning, hands-on learning and exploring. That. Well, Jody, we want to thank you uh, for giving us a good tour here. We got a lot of fans going, but uh, hopefully your voice will come through. Thanks very much for your time. <laughs> Now we're in the FFA building here in the Pope County Fairgrounds. Uh, uh, we have uh, one of the local uh, FFA instructors. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Nancy Lowen. I am the advisor for the Middlewaska FFA chapter here at the Middlewaska Schools. Today you're in our FFA barn, um, which gives my students a chance to exhibit and show off the things that they've learned through the FFA chapter whether it be through educational posters, through animals, through um, a leadership activity with teaching kids what we do with the animals, what they produce, um, gives the students a chance to mingle with other exhibitors and pick up some other life skills, um, and just show off the agriculture, the production side of agriculture as well as the agri-science you, agriculture. When you talk about agriculture, your crop in this area looks extremely well. Is that what you're finding in the area? Yes, but they are stressed. Um, uh, we definitely need rain. I mean, obviously timing is not always good with a fair, but um, I think it would certainly be a welcome sight as you drive around and look at the crops or but asking it, for At least coming from Alexandria, it looks like a lot better than a lot of part of the country. Uh, our audience obviously can probably hear the, the little chicks uh, uh, chirping here. We got some rabbits here today. You can uh, just kind of walk down uh, uh, the, the aisle and tell us what you got here. We got some uh, geese, uh, ducks, turkeys, and... Uh, yep, a mismatch of ducks, turkeys, and, and geese in this pen. Um, obviously, it's a, a very warm today, so they're, they're trying to stay cool and soaking up a, a little cool life. Sure. Um, Let's just keep going, keep going. and, and uh, I'm trying to give our audience uh, some idea of the things they see when they bring their kids, grandkids down to the Pope County Fair. Uh, we've got goats, we've got sheep, uh, uh, and uh, uh, on this end, it doesn't look like we have any, any hogs or our calves right here, maybe in the other section over there, but uh, uh, some horses, and I guess we do have some calves down here. Yep, and with us this year. Okay, it looks like you got a, a good little display. I'm going to jump next door and uh, watch some of the 4-H uh, judging is go going on and we want to thank you uh, for talking to Inform TV and, uh, and the people in West Central Minnesota. Thank you for coming today and sharing our story. You're welcome. Now we're back in the 4-H uh, building. They're doing some chicken judging. Jody, tell us what's going on here. Well, this we're right in the middle of the poultry show right now. Earlier we had pigeon judging. Right now we've got, these are the white egg laying hens out in the arena right now. So the judge is inspecting each bird, uh, seeing how it's going to be as a production hen. The members stand by their cages and are, are there to answer questions to the judge. Okay, that sounds good. So he's inspecting them. After he gets through there, he's going to go back and decide which uh, pair of birds is the best pair and he'll give a, um, a champion ribbon to them and then probably reserve champion to the next. And each member will walk out of the arena with either a red, blue, or white ribbon. We've got some, obviously, some uh, light challenges in here, Jody, but uh, uh, we'll give the people on Inform TV uh, an idea of what they're going to see when they come to the Polk County Fair. And uh, let's just walk right into the to the other building. I don't hopefully I don't trip over a cage because I'm using my eye. 
I a uh, uh, piece that I normally don't use, but in the low light, uh, I try to. Uh, what all you have here now, Jody? So this is the cattle barn. We've got uh, dairy cattle as well as beef cattle in Polk County. Um, we have good representation from both. Okay, it looks that way. You got a uh, lot of fans going, so people have to uh, bear with us. We've got real light challenges and, and noise, but uh, uh, we have basically this is the, uh, the dairy side. You have a beef yeah. side too. So this is the dairy side. Most of our breeding in Pope County is Polskin. Um, we have registered animals as well as great animals. And then on the other side over here, we have all of our beef animals. Okay, uh, we've got that a sounds good. Let's just keep moving. So uh, We have a variety of beef steers and heifers, different breeds from crossbred to registered Angus, registered Kenya. Uh, we have, uh, we've got dairy steers as well. We'll uh, give our, our audience just a little idea what they can see when they, they bring the people from the cabin uh, or Alexandria or any of the, the many small towns uh, surrounding uh, Glenwood. And uh, uh, let's just walk down the aisle here a little bit, Jody. You can do a little talking if you want. I'm just going to let the camera run and uh, see what we get, as they say. Uh, yeah, a lot of activity going on here. As I said, today's entry day. So okay. and we also have a big open beef show last year. We had well over 100 entries come in from around the area, from different counties, all the way from southern Minnesota up to North Dakota. People come to this open beef show. It's one of the earlier ones in the year, um, right before their county fairs. They like to get their animals out and in the ring and get a good taste for how they're going to do in the ring, get them a little practice. Um, each of these members spend hours training these animals. A lot of them will start yeah, in the fall of the year to get them to lead well. They work on their coats, um, to get their hair coat to make sure that they can get it fitted out nice, uh, making sure that they're feeding them properly so they have just the right amount of finish on them. And um, it's, it's definitely not a small task to take a beef animal or a dairy animal or any of these animals to the county fair. Uh, it looks like you did a wonderful job. Uh, we want to thank you, Jody, and hopefully people will maybe get some advice from you when they're down at the fair. So, thanks, yeah. Jody. Well, thank you. Well, Jody, we all know we've got quite a hog industry yet in uh, outstate Minnesota. Uh, let's tell us what you got here. Well, we do, this is our swine barn. Um, like I mentioned, we don't have as many pigs that come to the county fair as we used to because of uh, disease. They, they, uh, pigs also pick up the same types of diseases that humans do, and they, a lot of the, the swine, they don't always bring because of that. So we have our, our pigs in the barn here. Um, We've got market barrels, we've got market gilts, and breeding gilts. Do you have any idea, you know, nationwide about 90% of the hog industry now is controlled by packers and hog coordinators and uh, uh, in uh, Polk County, uh, uh, some of the pigs here, are these all from 4-H uh, uh, kids or, or their parents uh, uh, buying the feed and, and selling hogs yet, or this is part of contract hogs we have in here as well, or not? Um, you know, I can't tell you all the specifics. I, I don't know each family, but I know every single family that brings hogs. Uh, the the kids, it's a family operation. You know, okay. they might they might have to do some contracts and things, but um, each of the each of the kids, they're part of the family operation, and the sure. parents. It's a, it's a very generational. They thing still got to feed them and water them and take care oh, of them. So. Yeah. Why don't you walk down a little bit, Jody, and, and uh, uh, breed-wise, you know, when I was a kid, uh, obviously we'd go through a hog barn and uh, we had all kinds of colors. Today everything is pretty well uh, uh, white, uh, and uh, uh, I see you've got a few mixed breeds here, but it, in the 50s and 60s, as they say, there was, uh, it was a different hog world in those days. Yeah, um, and hog is not my, or swine is not my specialty, but we do have a lot of, some different colors here. Um, some of the members, I know we have a few registered Duroc, we've got some different crossbreeds. So it's always fun to see the different colors come into the ring, and when they start showing them, the, the pigs really have a fun time running around, and the kids do too. Well, uh, Jody, you've been a great ambassador for uh, uh, Polk County and uh, the Glenwood area, and uh, we sure want to uh, encourage people to come down and see the hard work uh, you, uh, your 4-H students, and the uh, people in uh, Polk County have put together with a fair they can be very proud of. And uh, we hope we get a big crowd down to enjoy the facilities here. And uh, maybe, uh, do you have any comments as far as uh, 
uh, what you got coming up in the grandstand? Do you know right off the hand, or am I putting you on the spot too much? I never thought of that till now. Um, I don't know the exact start times. I don't get to enjoy that stuff. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm working behind the scenes, but I do know um, Friday night is the rodeo. Okay. So that should have a, a big draw. Um, so come early. If you're planning to come to the rodeo, come early. Take in the fair beforehand. Uh, the grandstand, I'm sure, will be full. Saturday night is the Truck and Tractors Hole. Okay. Um, another big draw, big event. We usually uh, draw lots of people in to come to that. And then Sunday is Demolition Derby in the afternoon. Okay, well that sounds great. You, you uh, ad-libbed very well. You know what you're doing, Jody. We thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Bye now. We just encourage everybody to come to uh, uh, Polk County Fair and enjoy what they've got here. So, thank you. Now, as we wrap up our coverage uh, uh, of introducing you to the Pope County Fair here in Glenwood, uh, uh, we just want to remind you as we close down there with Jody giving us uh, a good instruction as far as what all was here, she told me the fair is all so free. So uh, come on down, you want some great entertainment at the right price, as they say. Come on down to the Pope County Fair. Uh, Mark Anthony and Alan Repke and Form TV will be in the commercial building in the southeast corner of the fairgrounds and uh, uh, doing a little interviews with uh, various companies and, and people of interest. And uh, you can see a chunk of the Keystone Pipeline that's uh, been controversial and you can see how incredibly heavy it is yet some of our politicians and leaders have said it's not strong enough uh, even though there's thousands of miles of that same pipe in the ground already and has served the public for a, a decade or more so come on down to the Pope County Fair uh, and look at the machinery look at the animals enjoy the rides and and as always the great fair food Inform TV, Alan Repke reporting from Glenwood at the Pope County Fair. So one day we were, uh, Stephen and I were out fishing sunfish and um, we were coming along the shoreline and we saw a nest. Um, so we thought we'd go over and look at it and there were nothing but broken eggs in the nest. Except for one egg looked like it had pretty much it was whole so uh, we went over and picked up the egg and looked at it and there was a, a, a festus here he was uh, starting to break out the bottom of the egg so we picked up the egg and we brought it home and put it in an incubator and uh, by the end of the day it had hatched out and so Stephen's been taking care of the little goose all summer long and just a couple weeks ago it started flying along with us with the boat so that's been pretty fun that's kind of what we figured might happen by the end of the year if, if uh, he survives the uh, the year. No animals or no cars running him over. So he's been pretty fun. He eats everything and anything that he can get his mouth on. So do you think he's male or female? Do you think um, you're right with Festus? We're we're guessing it's female. Okay. But well, we decided on Festus. Wait for that truck to go by. We uh, decided on Festus because it's a strange, strange pet, and so we figured a strange name might be good. So we uh, we borrowed the name from Gunsmoke, uh, the character name. Festus. I'll pick him up. You tell me when you're ready to go, and I'll open my lens and. Okay. You gotta make sure he's uh, coming first. Just a second one, Sal. I think I'm gonna switch back. I, I've, uh, uh, let's see if, do I have a record on now? I think with the, the sun is not so, so tough today yep. that I think I can, I lost him in a couple times in the sun uh, the last time. Yep. And I, I'm gonna to try to avoid that. And uh, come on. You think he's getting ready? Oh! 
Take him on the Okay, well you tell me when you're ready and I'm gonna get it. Okay, let's go. Hit the bird! Good flying, Festus! <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> Did it hit you? Yeah, it hit me right in the throat. <laughs> Festus, you gave us quite a show. <laughs> you wanted to uh, relax, I think. We got Land right in the boat. <laughs> Here's Harley. He's going to play a little bit. Well, very good, Festus. That was a nice flight. You almost came right through the cabin here, though. Give me a wing flap, can you? Give me a good big wing flap. Yeah, isn't that something, are they? <laughs> what do you got, a turtle in the other pail? Oh, we got some turtles in that sister pail. Ah, there he goes, a champion! All right. Very good. Anything else to say, Fastest? That's good. I gotta stay away from those gun barrels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that opens this weekend, doesn't it? Or next weekend? I think this weekend, because it's usually around the 